appropriate interpretation. For example, in the 70s, when Uganda got independent and uh, its first president was who was the first president of Uganda? Then the partner realized that it was 
I like that for whiskey. <laughs> so, the way to do it now, drink. Uh, the stuff I use as I say, the chief of the guy, the head of lawyers, the one corner of Joseph Maria Mundi, if you go to the Google, the one Joseph Maria Mundi, he was the most feared uh, person in Uganda at that time. And if you are so very drinking, and you go to the movie there, taking a drink, um, I will pay. So at the end, uh, when they were about to go, I mean, we go for <coughs> the deal. So, the man prepared the deal, Mustafa Idris drank so much, but, uh, so many shillings of drink. Maria Mung moved so much. All the minutes. And then at the end of the day, at the end of the um, deal, you have a total of three minutes. So total, so much. Now, I mean, looks like that. Still, where would she? I know all these people. But I don't know this one. Total. I'm not going to pay for total. <laughs> okay, listening skills. Listening skills, listening is extremely important in uh, our day to day um, life because we have to make sure that uh, we very attentive. Um, but then it's one of the hardest things, not the most hardest, but the hardest thing that one can uh, um, experience. Why? Because there are lots and lots of things that we are bombarded with. Nature has given us the time that we have got two ears so that we may hear what others are speaking. Listening is a way to help us to get things more effectively, to understand things more ex uh, effectively. A writer called it Ernest Hemingway said this about it. I like to listen. I've learned a great deal by listening carefully. But most people never listen. I'm sure you have uh, been told or you have been uh, scolded or you have been reprimanded by people. You don't listen. What do they mean? You have two years. <laughs> they say you don't listen. So, listening has got a more meanings than one. And that is what we want to uh, explore today. When we listen, there is what is called 
the process of listening. In other words, listening is an activity. And in that activity of listening, there are a number of things that happen. Listening is in the mind. When you are tuned to listen, you will listen. But when you are not tuned to listen, people can be talking and you are simply not listening. Listening is an exercise where you tune your hearing senses to get what people are saying. In other words, listening is a conscious. Listening is an active process of getting information. We listen sometimes in order to improve our interpersonal and oral exchange. I was a privilege to be sitting next to the in 
interested in then they would interject in Russian and so on. So I picked out quite a few of uh, uh, those exchanges. So what are the statements in the release? Boxing, what, what, what is the boxing? But anyway, in Bassan, 
telling me that you are listening to what someone is saying and he is somehow sympathizing with that person. Right? So, these are attributes of uh, uh, importance of vision. To show that we are serious, to display respect for other people's views, help us to learn, help us to adapt and understand, and to empathize. More importantly, we listen before the world to avoid the communication errors. If you don't listen, and someone asks you, what was the, uh, was that one saying? What were people saying, you mean you went to a meeting? What were they saying? If you were not listening, what are you going to say? We cook up something to help us learn something new. And the listening is key to success. Even in our academic pursuits, most of the times the lecturers will be talking like the way I'm talking here. But if someone is not listening, then Obviously, they will forget and they will not succeed. Now, there is a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is very easy because those are the noises that we all get because of what it is. Uh, hearing system. But listening is uh, something that you train yourself to do. Because you are saying hearing is passive, while the listening is active. Hearing you can hear you really any. I'm sure we are now hearing the humming of uh, uh, the projector up there. That's it. I mean, that makes much sense. But listening is active. For example, when people are laughing there, you want to find out what are those people laughing at. What is it that is making them last? And therefore, you actively try to get what is making those people last. Hearing is a physical function, it's a biological function because of the sense of hearing. Whereas this thing is an internal behavior, a mental function. Abigail. You need to follow 
might be good. Be this is Samuel 15. This is nice. Abigail, we are told, at least that's what that uh, preacher was saying. She was claiming that Abigail was a very beautiful girl. I don't know whether she saw what he said. But he was telling us, you know. And fortunately, she was married to a very notorious um, person. So it so happened that the, um, at some point David was running away from Saul. Remember the story of David, right? And then uh, Saul, so Saul, after David had the slain Goliath. He wasn't exactly what he, he gave him some uh, responsibilities and so so, but he wasn't very happy. Right? Because he was there, I say that uh, David would take over at some point. So there was a time when so, um, was, uh, when David was running for his life. He had to run quickly with his uh, soldiers. So he didn't have any provision. So he went to this guy. Say, I like, could okay, can you give us some provision that was my people here? Um, but this guy did not want to give uh, David provisions. So David was angry with him because when David was a chef, they had been looking after sheep. He couldn't be sick for this guy, right? So he would say, continue And when we were out, uh, out there, we looked up like a sheep, and uh, you somehow are now not helping. So he got angry and he decided that he was going to um, kill this guy. But his wife, Abel, um, Abigail, decided that no, uh, he should sell his husband and the family. So he went to David and pleaded on behalf of the husband. That's the story of Abigail, if you have a friend. But I was surprised that this is the same as well. I think this was right because eventually David married me. I mean, you know, and he's dead wife. So he may have been attacked. Active listeners use verbal and non-verbal techniques to show and keep their attention on the speaker. So when we, you are speaking, you learn that, well, uh, I am being listened to by looking at the expression of people. When they are listening, they use the both verbal and non-verbal techniques to show their attention on the speaker. This lady who was preaching to us, we tried to give her both verbal and non-verbal techniques to tell her that she was the going overboard, but she could it. Because one of 
if he had been given time to teach, to preach, but we were made to understand the previous week that uh, this uh, Sunday, meaning yesterday, it was the time for uh, the Sunday school to recite. So naturally, we thought, well, uh, her preaching would be short. But she decided that no, we needed to listen to her and not the case. So we didn't take kindness back. Uh, you could see people in front sleeping. And some of us who were this time, we were trying to uh, look at our watches and things like that. But somehow she was so engrossed with her preaching that she didn't realize that we were looking at our watches and things like that. Anyway, normally, uh, when you are You have these signals, right? Both verbal and unverbal, that hear and they listen to or are a lost people. Right? This not only supports your ability to focus, but it also helps to ensure that the speaker can see that uh, they are focused and are engaged with their own gifts. So that is very, very important. Um, there are several techniques that uh, you use. In making sure that people are listening to you, making sure that uh, you have listened. When people say things, they say a lot of things. But when you are listening, you try to restate what was said in your own words. In other words, you paraphrase. I have told you the story of Abigail that this lady said. She said a lot of things. Our service is supposed to be one hour. From 6 30 to 7 30. And if you include the other things which are very important, like uh, uh, telling you to go and uh, uh, give money and so on and so forth, then it goes up in the This lady preached up to 9 o'clock. That's preaching. That's right. And then it was at 9 o'clock that she was saying, well, uh, these kids have got to uh, recite things and so on. So some of us walked out because, I mean, we had other things to do and so on. But anyway, what she was talking about was just this story about the uh, Ataman taking it upon themselves to make this. Right? Because if she, Abigail, did not go to David, then David was going to come and destroy her family. So she took it upon herself to humble herself to go to David and say, okay, I mean, uh, you know my husband, he is the rock, right? So can you uh, please forgive him and forgive us? And so on. Um, 
If you are listening and still attentive there and actively, you can summarize the points that the speaker is uh, saying. So, putting together points that the speaker has uh, said, main points. If you are attentive, you have the ability to ask questions to challenge the speaker to be better, to seek clarification. So sometimes when people speak and then they try to ask people whether they have understood it. Or whether they put any questions, and then the people are silent, it either means that they were not listening, or they were dreaming of some other things. If they were actively listening, they will ask questions.
the other skill that we need to have is that one of being empathetic. Listening for emotions and connection. I'm sure sometimes when you listen to people talking, you feel like you can you are you can cry, huh? Tears start forming. In other words, you are empathetic. In church, that is what sometimes gets people worked up. Because they try to tell you or to make you feel that you are the most sinful of individuals. Like in one of the sermons I went to, I was wearing my blue jeans. This guy was preaching. And he says, and I'm home. But my child was
Thank <laughs> you. 